Karate students will be breaking lots of boards in Oxford this weekend, and it's all for a good cause. Much warmer temperatures on the way to East Alabama. We'll have the forecast details for Friday and the weekend coming up. The White Plains boys soccer team are preparing for a second round playoff matchup. We'll visit with the Wildcats coming up in sports. EA and local news starts now. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by WM Grocery, located in Heflin, Wadawi, Roanoke, and in Piedmont. Good evening and thank you for watching East Alabama Now Local News for Thursday, May 4th, 2023. I'm Katie Edwards. And I'm Mike Stedham. A board breakathon will be held Saturday starting at 11 at Smith's Martial Arts in Oxford to raise funds for a local businessman who's struggling with cancer. Chad Smith, the owner of Smith Martial Arts, says the more boards they break, the more money they will raise. Our students are uh, out raising money. They're trying to get donations and pledges from uh, different family members and uh, members of the community to come in and break boards. And for every board they break, then the, their uh, donation will go uh, toward that. So if they get a dollar a board, It'll be like a $10 donation that that, uh, that person will donate to our great fundraiser that we got. Smith says a full day of activity is planned with food vendors and karate demonstrations. But the main event will be the breaking of boards, lots and lots of boards. Hey, this is just a great community event. Uh, we're out here trying to support one of our local business owners that is uh, having a tough time. Um, our students are geared up and ready to go. They're getting behind this and, uh, you know, it takes a village. So our whole community is getting together. We hope you guys as a community will come out and help support also. Michelangelo, yes, the Ninja Turtle Michelangelo will also be there for all the kids to take his pictures with. And there'll be grilled cheese donuts. Now, what is your opinion of grilled cheese donuts. Kate. Well, I like grilled cheese and I like donuts, so I guess don't knock it till we try it. Yes, and uh, we hope that we like the whole thing. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I think we should probably stick to what we know best. Which is the news. The news, yes. Out of the Shadows is an annual event that addresses the social stigma that often makes it difficult for people with mental health issues to get the help they need. This year's Out of the Shadows program will be next Friday, May 12th at the Oxford Civic Center from 8 a.m. until 4.30 p.m. One of the organizers of the program, Brenda Stedham, says bringing these issues out into the open is an important first step in helping people find treatment. Right, well, one thing is people don't want the world to know, when I say world, I mean the local area, to know that they have a mental illness. They don't want the, the local folks to know that they're in treatment for uh, a mental illness. Uh, and we tend to uh, not, not be as open to those who have mental illnesses as we are to those who are not. Because sometimes they may have um, uh, behaviors that are uncomfortable or whatever. So we want to train people who come to this program to be open to those people, to encourage them to say whatever they're willing to say, because the more we talk about it, the more we admit to it, the more we get training and education and counseling for it, the better off we'll all be. Out of the Shadows has been putting on these programs for years, and Stedham says previous sessions have already done a lot of good for people who deal with this issue daily. Absolutely. We have people at our programs every year who'll pull me aside or pull one of the other members aside and say, this is so wonderful. I'm dealing with the same issue and, and I got some good ideas. Now I know where to go to get more. Um, uh, family members will say, I'm so glad you're doing this. You're talking about this. You're not shutting it up in a closet so that we feel like we can talk about it more. So yes, and the people who get continuing education hours love it. They tell us that these are some of the best continuing education hours they get ever, and it's also much cheaper for them. When we come back, there's something rumbling in Piedmont this Saturday. We'll have the details for you after this short break. 
Since 1993, WM Grocery has been a major part of our local community. WM offers the very best in fresh produce and an outstanding meat department. WM also has many local products not found anywhere else and fresh sushi every day. If you need an event catered, come see Mrs. K at any WM store. Curbside pickup is also available for your online grocery orders. Be sure to download the WM app for all the deals of the week and shopper rewards. Go check them out today at any of their locations. We take pride in our community and appreciate your business. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by Waldrop Manufacturing, metal buildings made right here in Calhoun County. If you have a vintage vehicle of any kind, car, truck, motorcycle, or what have you, you're invited to bring it to downtown Piedmont Saturday for an antique car show. This free exhibition is a collaboration between the Piedmont Arts and Entertainment Committee and the Piedmont Throttle Kings. Ashley Jones, the marketing liaison for the Arts Committee, has the details. Uh, it's our first ever car show, so we're really relying on their expertise with the Throttle Kings, and they're super excited about it. They're expecting about 150 to 200 cars, even with the weather being what it is. Um, so it's rain or shine. It's from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. downtown. If you don't know where downtown Piedmont is, it's the corner of Center and Lodiga. So if you know where the gazebo is downtown, that's right where we're going to be for registration. Um, you can show up with your car, your truck, your off-road vehicle, your motorcycle, all that good stuff. And we'd love to see you out there. Today is the 71st annual National Day of Prayer. And thousands of events have been held nationwide by civic and religious groups. Prayer meetings were held all over the country to commemorate the event. And EAN Local News made it to one local gathering in Oxford. A crowd assembled at Chocolaca Park this morning to mark the occasion. One of the speakers was the Reverend Isaac Chappelle Jr., pastor of the Sweet Home Missionary Baptist Church in Munford. Chappelle says he believes these gatherings are very important, especially when America is in turmoil. Children need prayer, parents need prayer, families need prayer, the community needs prayer, the nation needs prayer, the media needs prayer, the military needs prayer, law enforcement needs prayer. The only way that we're going to come together as God desires us to is through prayer. So this National Day of Prayer is very important because we certainly need God to heal our land. And He has told us in His Word that the only way that He will heal our land is that if we just pray and turn from our wicked ways. So that's why the National Day of Prayer is so important all across this land. The resolution inviting people to pray for the nation was passed by both houses in 1952 and signed into law by President Harry S. Truman. Well, John, I hear you were out at Chocolaca Park this morning for the National Day of Prayer. How was the weather? It was a beautiful morning at Chocolaca Park for the National Day of Prayer and Prayer Walk, and that turned into a beautiful day, and we've got a nice weekend coming as well. All of the forecast details are coming up. Well, my name is Mike Craven, and we recently purchased a, an open carport, metal carport, from a Waldrop manufacturer. I have an extra car, we have a very small home, very small driveway, and I needed somewhere just to park another vehicle, just out of the weather. And I had been told by two or three friends that knew we had recently remodeled a home that uh, Waldrop's were the people that you need to go talk to. I was in that area one day and I thought, hey, I'll just stop in, and I did without calling, and uh, greeted warmly well taken care of. It was just, it, really the whole process was just good from day one. Two pieces of good news in the weather department here in East Alabama today. Warmer temperatures and those winds we had for the last several days finally subsiding and going away. High temperature today at 77. Good bit warmer than it has been the last several days, getting more close to our average for this time of year. We had a chilly morning, though, 43 degrees this morning, close to the record low temperature, our record high 91. You see that 91 degree temperature there? We may not be far away from that. Uh, next week here in East Alabama, we'll talk about that in our seven day forecast coming up. You see the sunrise and the sunset times. Weather on your street. We are going to take you all across Calhoun County as we take a look at weather on your street. We'll begin at Buckner Circle out of McClellan. 
beautiful evening and it will be much better for maybe a moonlight walk tonight. Not as cool as it has been. The low tonight only dropping down to 53 during the evening hours tonight. We'll be in the upper 50s and low 60s. Really nice weather out at McClellan on Buckner Circle during the day tomorrow, Friday and early start to the weekend. Some small rain chances about 75 degrees. The folks out at the Aniston Army Depot, they roar up and down by them with the Wood Road out in Welburn, and that will be a busy highway. It always is, and those folks will be eager to get the weekend started as they get off work tomorrow. 75 for the high, as we said, only about a one in three chance of a shower coming up tomorrow out Welburn Way. As we move into the weekend, everyone looking for the weekend. This will be a very nice weekend. Temperatures will be in the 80s. It's a summertime pattern. Nesbitt Lake Road out Pleasant Valley Way out in the country. If you're looking for a Saturday drive out on the countryside in the middle of springtime in Alabama, not much better than going out Nesbitt Lake Road to Pleasant Valley and not much better weather with temperatures in the 80s. Summertime weather pattern. We'll even mention a little bit of humidity. Chance of rain about 40%. That will be in the late afternoon and early evening hours. Seven day forecast. Those temperatures continue to rise. We mentioned yesterday getting back into the 80s for the weekend. Sunday after you get home from church about 85 degrees. A better chance of shower and thunderstorm activity with the heating of the day on Monday and Tuesday. This is what we mean by a summertime weather pattern. You'll have plenty of heat. Plenty of sunshine, but then late in the day, those pop up showers and thunderstorms and look at these temperatures. Wednesday should be the warmest day that we have had so far in 2023. About a one in three chance of a shower, 88 for the high. Some of the model data, believe it or not, is showing 90 degrees on Wednesday across East Alabama. Now, where is the heat coming from? Well, right here you see East Texas, North Louisiana, South Arkansas, and most of central and southern Mississippi today, they already had temperatures in the mid 80s. You see here in our part of the country, 77 up in Huntsville, 78 in Birmingham. Those temperatures that you see here, this red that you see off to our west, that is going to spread eastward during the weekend and into the early part of next week. And we'll have those red temperatures in those 80s and maybe even a 90 degree temperature here in East Alabama by the middle of next week. Sports is coming up now with Chase Robinson telling us about White Plains soccer making some history. Chase. Thanks, John. Five years ago, White Plains High School started a soccer program. And anytime you start something from scratch, there are going to be growing pains, but there's also reward. For the first time ever, the Wildcats will have a chance to compete in the second round of the AHSAA playoffs after shutting out Cherokee County 2 to nothing in the first round. Coach Chase Cotton helped start and has been coaching this team for all five years and is seen firsthand the growth and reward of this program. First year, of course, first year program, we took our lumps and, um, you know, had to fight through a lot of adversity. And second year, uh, you know, things improved. Third year, we were right there uh, in the semifinals of, you know, the Calhoun County tournament and lost out on going to the finals in PKs. And so every year we've, since we started, we've, you know, we've accomplished another goal. And, um, you know, this year we, we wanted to go past the first round and we've accomplished that goal. But I mean, I really think that we've got, you know, a, a chance to, to do more. It first started when I was in seventh grade. Yeah, our first year it wasn't really that good. We, we weren't good. And then people started joining soccer. They started liking the sport and we became better and better. And I'm glad this, you know, this program started for our school. The Wildcats have made the first round of the playoffs the last three seasons, but have never won a playoff game. The players have been working for this moment and understand the importance of being in round two. It's a big accomplishment for us. Um, you know, we've been a first round for three years in a row and going to second round, you know, something big that we always wanted to do. And this year we weren't able to do that and we continue to keep going. It feels, it feels good, especially we've been uh, to the round, playoff rounds for three years now and now it feels good that we're going to second for the first time. The Wildcats are 11 and four on the season and Coach Cotton has seen a lot of improvement over the course of the last three months that has given them opportunities to win games and to be in the position they're in now. Um, we've changed some positions around that it's, it's helped out a lot here towards the end of the season and we just got you know kids have you know, found that you know, mental toughness that, you know, was lacking a little bit at the first, you know, to, you know, go after every ball and to, um, you know, play the kind of defense that wins games and, you know, 
always, you know, supporting your teammates when we're on, you know, we're on the attacking end. You know, just just things that, you know, they, we've got we've got kids who I've had to plug in who haven't played a lot, and it was just, you know, having, you know, the, the kids having that, you know, that trigger, you know, knowing that, you know, how aggressive they need to be and, you know, where to give support, you know, just all the things that come with, you know, the, the things that improve as you go through a soccer season. The White Plains Wildcats will take on Westbrook Christian tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. That game will be at Chakalaka Park in Oxford. Also on the girls' side, staying in Class 4A, Jacksonville will host Westbrook Christian Saturday, 1 o'clock there on the campus at Jacksonville High School. Alabama Athletics Director Greg Byrne announced today that the university has fired head baseball coach Brad Bohannon after six seasons leasing the Crimson Tide. The university released a statement earlier today. It says Alabama Director of Athletics Greg Byrne announced he has initiated the termination process for head baseball coach Brad Bohannon for, among other things, violating the standards, duties, and responsibilities expected of university employees. Bohannon has been relieved of all duties and Jason Jackson will serve as the interim head coach. There will be no further comment at this time pending an ongoing review. This news comes just days after a possible betting scandal involving suspicious betting activity on Alabama baseball games. According to ESPN, the Ohio Casino Control Commission first reported suspicious wagering activity at the BetMGM Sportsbook at Grand American Ballpark in Cincinnati, Ohio, involving the Alabama LSU game from this past Friday and multiple states began to halt bets on Alabama baseball. We'll have more on this story as it unfolds. Alabama does begin a three-game series with Vanderbilt tonight in Tuscaloosa. Last night, the baseball season for Donahoe came to an end in the quarterfinals on the road at Lindsey Lane. The Falcons fell in the first game 4-0, followed by the second game, Lindsey Lane won 15-5 to move on to the semifinal round of the AHSAA baseball playoffs. That's it for sports. Let's send it back over to Mike and Katie. Thanks for watching East Alabama Now Local News. For a more traditional way of watching our newscast, tune in to our East Alabama Now YouTube page. We want to hear from you. So start a chat. We would love to respond and get your feedback. Our stories are still also available through Facebook, and we would love to hear from your comments and suggestions there as well. We want to have a conversation with you. So be sure to join us tomorrow night for your news on your schedule.